So to go over some literature around um, using ultrasound for um, pneumonia. So one of the most quoted study is probably this meta-analysis that was published in 2015 that included eight studies for a total of seven and, uh, 765 children. Um, all of these eight studies quoted quite high specificity and sensitivity with an overall sensitivity of 96% and specificity of 93%. And um, these high um, sense and spec are often um, re uh, reiterated by various studies, including one by Shah et al. Um, that quotes a sensitivity of 86% and specificity of 97% for detecting pneumonia as confirmed by chest x-rays. Um, another study by uh, Dasani et al. that um, finds similar numbers. Um, there was also an RCT done by Jones et al. in 2016 um, that looked at, um, uh, that uh, employed 15 PEM attendings and fellows with various level of ultrasound experience that underwent a one hour training session. And they looked at pediatric patients who were suspected to have pneumonia, and they enrolled into a randomized controlled trial comparing lung ultrasound versus chest x-ray. Um, and they also um, found that it may be a feasible and safe substitution to chest x-ray when you're evaluating children for pneumonia. Um, another study by Chavez et al. Um, quotes that it may be beneficial for um, low resource settings where you may not have ready access to chest x-ray. So to quote some um, interesting studies. So this one um, is by uh, Iorio et al. Um, that suggests lung ultrasound should be incorporated into a diagnostic algorithm and it can uh, safely replace chest X-ray, at least in the patients who are in good clinical condition without missing significant cases. Um, here's another one by Milliner et al. that tried to elucidate uh, the common locations of lung consolidation within children. And they found that pneumonias are um, more commonly found in the lower areas of the lung and as well as the uh, posterior zones. So when you're scanning, make sure to pay attention to those areas. To highlight some of the work happening at SickKids, um, Mark Starr is working with Maya, one of our PEM fellows, to publish the study on cost effectiveness of using lung pocus. And they found that there is a 91 minute, sorry, an 81 minute uh, reduction in ED length of stay. And there's also potential for um, cost saving as well. And it's currently in the pipelines to, um, to definitely look out for their publication. And another ongoing project is a collaboration with Aga Khan University Hospital in Pakistan. Uh, we're aiming to train novice users who are non-MD community health workers on using handheld focus devices to diagnose childhood pneumonia. So stay tuned for that as well. So moving on to our second case, um, we have a five-year-old girl with respiratory distress. She was diagnosed with pneumonia three days ago and has already uh, been treated on high dose amoxicillin. So for the respiratory distress, you want to take a look at the lungs and see what's going on. And this is what you see. So how to describe the finding, Magali? Hypomacric um, structures around, this, just surrounding the lungs, so probably fluid around the nose, around the patient, and underneath it, you see the lines. Yes, definitely. Magley was saying that you can see the pleural effusion there with the um, hypoechoic um, areas. And the and biopsy marker ready for being done. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another example. Perhaps developing some septations as well. Here's one more where you can see the um, tongue sign. And often when the pleural effusion is deep, you can switch to the phased array probe to get a better sense of the dimension of the effusion. Here's another one with tongue sign and the um, pleural effusion around it. So the evidence for um, using point of care ultrasound for pleural effusion is also quite solid. So in Lichtenstein's adult study, he found the sensitivity to be 92% and specificity of 97 to, uh, up to 97%. And he concluded that lung ultrasound can be accurately used for uh, thoracentesis guidance as well. A pediatric study by Haja Liangli et al. also concluded that check, 
chest CTs uh, might potentially be replaced by uh, POCUS with or without chest X-ray in evaluating complex effusions and empyemas. Here's another fun study that we have discussed in our journal club recently, where Hassan Dadal uh, wanted to validate equations for estimating the pleural effusion volumes uh, using ultrasound. So they looked at 46 cases whose effusions were aspirated to dryness. Keep in mind these were um, adult patients, um, but they used the ICC to determine predictive accuracy of five different equations. Um, to compare it to actual volumes of aspirated effusions. And they, the five equations that they used um, mentioned a combination of three different measurements, um, including the height, the lateral height of the effusion, uh, the distance between the collapsed lung and the chest wall, and the distance between the lung and the diaphragm. And in comparing the five equations, they concluded that this one where you have the um, lateral height multiplied by 100 um, has 79% accuracy. Um, and the most accurate is the one where uh, they incorporated both the lateral height as well as the, the diaphragm. Um, multiply that by 70 and it uh, reached a 83% accuracy with the aspirated volume. So that's something that uh, we typically do in the emergency, but something interesting to think about. So moving on to case three. So you're seeing now a 13-year-old male with a history of anxiety. He's coming in with sudden onset dyspnea and chest pain, and you're trying to decide, well, is he having another panic attack or is something um, actually going on um, with his lungs? <laughs> and so you take a look. So the first scenario, you see this, where you kind of get that ant's marching appearance at the top. Um, with normal lung sliding, which signifies normal lung. But then you move on to his other lung, and you don't appreciate the Where same the ants marching lung sliding appearance. So in this case, you are definitely suspicious for pneumothorax. So just wanted to give you guys a few more examples where there's absent lung sliding. Here's another example of a child with large pneumothorax, where there is absent lung sliding. Here's another one that I recently scanned about a week ago. And then often uh, we can see lung point as well, where normal lung sliding meets no lung sliding. Here's another example of a lung point. And we often talk about um, looking for pneumothoraces on the M mode as well. And how would you describe this sign, Peso? I have a memory of Israel sitting <laughs> the, the sea, lying down on the beach. Right, so you can see that um, the brightest line there um, around the two centimeter mark is the plural line. And just um, beyond that, you have this um, appearance of a sandy shore because in the dynamic normal lung, you often have movement of the lung which creates this grainy appearance. Versus in this case, when there is a pneumothorax, the lung beneath the pleura is not moving. So then you get this constant kind of barcode appearance rather than the grainy um, sandy beach appearance. Here's another example of a barcode sign where um, just distal to the, um, just interior to the, the pleura, you don't see um, that grainy appearance because the lung is static. Sometimes it can be hard to appreciate. So remember that uh, you can always compare it to the other side of the patient um, as a comparison. So on the left of the screen, you get that um, grainy sandy beach appearance. Um, and on the right of the screen, you get that barcode because there is static lung beyond the pleura. So hopefully that makes it a little bit more obvious. And to summarize uh, the pneumothorax findings, so you can find absence lung sliding, um, and you shouldn't have any paracamel signs. Um, if you see beelines or consolidation, it often signifies something else, such as a pneumonia. Um, you can see the lung point, you can see uh, the barcode sign on M mode. And then there are these two other um, uh, findings that uh, I was very interested to learn about. So the heart point, have you guys heard of that before? 